This video is about how to install Jupyter Notebook and Python 3.6 using Anaconda into Ubuntu 16.04. The outcomes for this video would be to download Anaconda, check some of the downloaded file, then use Anaconda to install Jupyter Notebook along with Python 3.6 and a lot of common third-party libraries. Create a Jupyter Notebook and then a short demonstration of a Jupyter Notebook with a large data set. The requirements, Ubuntu Linux, this video uses Ubuntu 16.04, an internet connection, and a minimum of additional 2.1 gigabyte disk storage space for Python 3.6 and Jupyter Notebook. Here's additional information from Anaconda, and then here's some places you can get some large data sets if you want to play with it using data science. Kaggle, US government data sets, and 538 data sets. Of course there's disclaimer. If you want to read the disclaimer please stop the video. Here I am at the Anaconda distribution download page which is at continuum.io downloads. And what I'm going to do is use Anaconda to download Jupyter Notebook as well as Python 3.6 and a lot of libraries. Since I'm using Ubuntu, I'm going to select Linux and let me go down here. And once I've got Linux, I've got two choices here, 3.6 or 2.7. I'm going to click Download. And right here, I'm going to save the file, click OK. Now, as it's download, you have a choice for getting a cheat sheet which gives you a lot of uh, actually links to assist you with working with Panda and NumPy and data science. You don't get it directly. You have to provide an email to get it. It will come to you with a link inside your email. So I'm going to click no thanks. I've already got the sheet, but that's up to you what you want to do. I simply don't want to put my email address out to everybody. And then I look over here and I simply sit here and wait till it's downloaded. Now it's almost downloaded. And so now the download is complete and I can go ahead and open a file. Once I finish download Anaconda, I'm going to go to the directions on how to install Anaconda. So I click right here. And the very first thing it asks you is to verify data integrity using a checksum. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is optional, but it's not very hard to do. So I'm going to open up a terminal with Control-Alt-T. And I'm going to go to the CD downloads directory, which is where it was downloaded, doing ls, and there it is. And I'm going to use md 5 sum anaconda 440 linux 86s. And then I'm going to pipe that into grep, which is a pattern matching. And then I'm going to see what the actual checksum is. So I'm going to click right here. Of course, in this case, I've used Python 3 64-bit. And in this case, I've got the hash for 3440 Linux x86. And right here is the MD5 checksum. Simply copy that. Open up my uh, terminal again. Paste it in here. And just simply hit Enter. If it's correct, we'll see a red match. If there was no match, you wouldn't see anything. For example, if there was no match, I would go here, and then let me change that to E, hit Enter, and that's what you would get if there was no match. Let's go back to the installer page. Click over here, and one more back, I guess, little more. And so we've got a good checksum. So let's go. It says bash downloads. Now you notice that you're not in the downloads directory here. And so that I'm just going to copy that. Go back to my terminal and drop out a downloads directory. And then just paste this instruction here. 
and hit enter. And it says in order to continue the installation process, please review the license agreement. Click enter. You're going to be asked to click enter or actually read the whole thing. I'm clicking spacebar here. And then you have to type in yes or no. Whoops. I have you got to hit my keyboards correctly. And it asks if you want to confirm the location. Now you can change the location if you want. And I'm going to put enter and just simply let it use the default location. And it's installing it in my home directory. Basically make sure that I don't have a lot of problems with the permissions. And that's pretty much it for installing it. We'll let it go through here. Now what you're going to get installed besides Jupyter Notebook is the entire Python 3.6 as well as a lot of support libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib. Now finally it asks you do you wish to install it to prepend the Anaconda install location to path in your home mic.bash rc I'm going to click y for yes and that's pretty much all there is next step will be to start up the Jupyter server and create a notebook now that I've got the Jupyter notebook installed I'm going to go ahead and start the Jupyter notebook server and then create a notebook I'm going to go over here where it says search your computer, click on that, and then start typing in T-E-R for terminal, and there's the terminal. I can also hit Control alt and t In this case, I'm going to make a directory to put my notebook in, and I'm going to call it Notebook Project. Then I'm going to go to that directory. And once there, I'm simply going to type in Jupyter Notebook. Hit enter. And up will come a web page run by the Jupyter Notebook server. Now to create a notebook, I click over here where it says New. And then I'm going to pick Python 3 because that's what Anaconda installed. And first thing I'm going to do is change the name. I just click right up here where it says t Untitled. I'm just going to call it Practice. And then Rename. And I'm just going to type in some simple Python. A equal 3 B equal 4. Now to put this into memory I'm going to hit Shift Enter. And then I'm going to say C equal A plus B. Hit enter and then just type in the C and then shift enter again. And the output is 7. Let me try D equal A times B. Enter. And this time I'm going to use a print statement. Print D. And again shift enter. And again I get the output. Now this time I'm going to import numpy as np and then I'm going to say arr equal np dot. Now if I hit tab you'll notice that nothing happens here. The reason is because import numpy as np is not into memory yet. So I'm going to back out of here and then hit shift enter. Go down one cell and this time I'm going to put AAR equal NP dot. I hit tab. And you'll notice I got a little bit of help here. And I'm going to just put in, put in a simple array. Hit enter again. And 7 comma 10 comma uh, 3. So I've got a NumPy rank 1 array. I hit enter. Just type in a or R. if I hit shift enter it will print it out for me. Now suppose I want to sort this array ARR dot well let me go see what I got. 
Now, well, I guess sort would start with an S. Let's see what we got when we got S O. Oh, there it is. Hit enter. Doesn't tell you about the ellipses, but there, there you go. And then I can print it out, or just simply A R R. Shift enter, and there we go. It's already sorted for you. And that's pretty much it for uh, creating a notebook. There are all kinds of other things like magic and shell commands and everything else that notebook will do, but that's beyond the scope of this video. I'll go here, file. I want to save it, save and checkpoint, make sure I save it, and close and halt. Now I've closed the notebook, but I haven't closed the Jupyter Notebook server. In order to close the notebook server, I have to go back to my terminal, open it back up, and type in control C. And within five seconds, I've got to put in a yes or a Y. And now the server is shut down. And that's pretty much it for creating a notebook. Here I am back in my Ubuntu page. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal again. Type in TR terminal, or you can hit Control Alt T. And if you recall, there's a uh, notebook project. So we're going to go to CD that I started before and then open up Jupyter Notebook. And up comes Jupyter Notebook. Now, in this case, I've got two more files in that directory. I've got install Jupyter Notebook practice and one called consumer complaints. Now, where did I get this consumer complaints? I got it from a site called Kaggle. K-A-G-G-L-E, and they have a lot of data sets. I go in there, and you actually have to sign in to download a data set. Let's see if I can search without having to sign in, because I've downloaded it. Search data sets, and I have consumer complaints. about banks. You have to create an account. All this is free. Well, there's Comcast Consumer Complaints, and there's this one right here, U.S. Consumer. And that's a file I've downloaded to just demonstrate what Jupyter Notebook can do. And you'll have to download it and create an account and download it. I mean, if you look at that file, I believe it's a fairly large file. And here the file is, it's 90 megabytes. And then you can download kernels, which are simply small notebooks produced by people. So let me go back to the notebook. I click home and rather than try and type all this in, I'm just going to run this notebook that I've created. And the first thing I've imported some data science Python libraries, pandas, NumPy and Matplotlib. I have to hit Shift Enter, and all of those have now been imported. There's nothing that shows. And now Data, and I'm going to read Consumer Complaints, and then Data Shape, which tells me how many columns and how many rows I have. Shift Enter. Now you notice a star right here. Well, there was a star here. It's implementing that. So here we've got a warning. And basically what it's saying is when you read this file, please give me the column headings or, and let me know what kind of data type I'm going to be dealing with. Otherwise, Pandas has to read all the way to the end of the file. And if you're dealing with a large file, which this is, which is I think it's 555,000 rows and 18 columns, that could create a little bit of a problem, but this is a warning. Let's go and see. We see data head 10. Let's go take a look and see what's in here. Shift enter again. And date receive product issue consumer complaint. And we'll go down there. Company, state, zip code. It's, it's just a lot of consumer complaints. You can play with it however you want. And what I'm going to do is, let's see how many banks we've got. Banks data, creating a list of how, of all the banks that have complaints. Hit Shift Enter. 
and there's 3,605 banks that have complaints. If I want to find out how many zip codes that have complaints, of length zip codes, shift enter, and 27,000 zip codes. This little piece of code is actually going to tell me what the top 10 banks are that have complaints. I hit shift enter. You'll see we've got Bank of America with 55,998 complaints and Nation Star Mortgage with 13,000. You can actually look in back up here into the data set and see if the complaints have been resolved or not. But I've just listed the actual complaints. I've used Matplotlib to actually plot these complaints. I hit Shift Enter. Here are all the different banks with their number of complaints in a bar graph. Anyway, that's pretty much it for uh, this video and just a short demonstration of what Jupyter Notebook can do. And you can share these notebooks fairly easily. Thank you.